Hey, how's everybody doing today? This is Tim from Lessons on the Web, and today we are talking about the circle of fifths and key signatures, and how they apply to uh, playing the piano and how they can help you play the piano and understand music uh, a lot better, actually. So I made some videos on this already in my music theory playlist, so I really highly suggest you check that out. I'll have a uh, little card that pops up to show you uh, where you can find that. So if you want to watch maybe the first 10 minute, uh, t first 10 videos or so, uh, just to make sure you understand this. But I'll try to walk you through it as we go along as well. Okay, here we have the circle of fifths, and if you know anything about the circle of fifths, it's all about figuring out what key signature you have and what sharps or flats are in each key signature. So remember a key signature is that thing that appears right at the beginning of a song. Now it's all these things around in the circle, like right there, right there. These are all key signatures, and if you notice, they all have a certain amount of sharps or flats that tell you, you know, what notes are sharp or flat in the song. They also tell you a little bit more than that. The other things that they tell you is generally what notes or chords that the song begins on. So say you're in C major with no sharps, no flats. Being in C major tells you there are no sharps, no flats, but it also tells you that the notes are going to be centered around C. So you're going to have a lot of C major chords. You're going to have some G major chords. If you understand more about music theory, you understand that. That's because that is the note or the chord built on the fifth note of the scale. So you have C, D, E, F, G, and then you build a chord on that, G major. So that's a common one you can have as well, but generally everything is centered around C. So like if you're in the key of B flat major, a lot of your notes are centered around the B flat chord, the major chord, and you know, uh, B, the note B flat. So a lot of times your, your beginning note and ending note will be whatever key you're in, but not every time. But it just is important to know that not only it, does it tell you uh, what notes are sharp to flat, it also tells you um, basically where the notes are centered around. Okay, so now I want to, before I really introduce this, tell you about two things. And one is called the order of sharps. And you want to memorize this. The order of sharps is F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. And then there's something called the order of flats. And that is B, E, A, D, G, C, and F, of course. So, F, C, G, D, A, E, B for the sharps, and B, E, A, D, G, C, F for the flats. Do you notice that there is a correlation between these two things? One is backwards of the other, so if you say the order of sharps backwards, you get B, E, A, D, G, C, F, which is your order of flats. If you say the order of flats backwards, F, C, G, D, A, E, and B, that's you know, your order of sharps backwards. So you can think of them that way. Um, one thing you might want to come up with is a little saying to remember this, uh, like for her uh, order of sharps, we came up with like fat children gather daily at every basketball game or something like that. Uh, whatever you come up with that makes sense. And then a lot of students are able to re uh, remember the order of flats very easily. Be bead and then GCF or greatest common factor. So that one's pretty easy. So those are just two little tips help you uh, memorize those. So next we're going to talk about really why uh, those order sharps and order flats are important. Well they tell you the order in which you add the sharps and the order in which you add the flats. For instance, our first key, the key of G, has one sharp. Uh, ignore all the ones on the inside, those are minor keys, we're not going to talk about those today. But you have uh, G and you have one sharp and that sharp is, well, you could read whatever note that was supposed to be right on that top line. You could say, okay, well, that's obviously an F. Or what you do is you go to your first in your order of sharps, which is F. Hey, they match up. How about that? If you go to the key of D, you have two sharps. And it's the first two in your order of sharps. It's going to be F and C. 
The one with three sharps is going to be F, C, and G. Four sharps is F, C, G, and D. So every time you're adding in on a sharp for each key signature. So there we go. Um, so like for instance, if you had five sharps, the key of B, um, you know that those five sharps are just the first five in your order sharps, F, C, G, D, and A. So they tell you what notes are sharp, not necessarily what key, the key name's a little different. Uh, the same thing with the flats in the order flat. So if you have the one with first, the, the first one with one flat, that flat, you know, if you drew a note right there, is going to be B flat. Well, hey, what's the one, first one in our order of flats? That's B. You know, so we have B flat and E flat, or B flat, and then the next one with two flats, we're going to have B flat and E flat, and then the one with three flats is the first three, B flat, E flat, and A flat, one with four flats, B, E, A, and D, and then all the way until you get to seven flats. Um, the key of C sharp has all seven sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E, B, and the key of C flat has all seven flats, B, E, A, D, G, C, and F. So to answer your question, uh, this will this work the same for a guitar? Yes, it will. So all these key signatures and everything apply uh, to guitar and almost every other instrument as well. Okay, so just going to ask, if I had a key signature with three sharps, we're not looking for what the key name is yet. We're looking for what notes are sharped. Well, if it's th the first three, right, it's going to be the first three in your order sharp. So F, C, and G. So just making sure we get that. Okay, what about the one with three flats? Well, it's going to be the first three in your order flats. It's going to so you're going to have B, E, and A all flat. Now for the key names. So now the confusing thing is what notes are sharped and flats and the key names are two different things. So you can, you got to you can't confuse that, you know, the key with one sharp. It's not called the key of F sharp, it's just that F sharp, F, the note F is sharped in that scale. So it's really the key of G. So it's it's hard to not get confused between those two things. Just remember that the key name is what the notes are centered around and the sharps are what notes are sharped or flat. Okay, so here's how to figure this out. Just remember one thing, three things really, that the key of C tells you a lot of things, whether it's the key of C, the key of C sharp, or the key of C flat. If it's the key of C, these are all major by the way, if it's the key of C major, it's gonna have no sharps and no flats. Just remember that. And then the key of C sharp, is going to have all seven sharps. And then the key of C flat is going to have all seven flats. So you got to remember that C is both nothing, right, just regular C, and then if it's C sharp, it's all sharps. C flat, it's all flat. So remember that C tells you an awful lot. It's, it's both the, the nothing and the, the absolute maximum uh, you can have. Let's go on to the next one, the one with one sharp right over here. It says G, right? That's kind of odd that the sharp is F sharp, but the key is G. So what you need to remember is, remember that if we have one sharp, and to figure out what sharp that is, that's just the first one in our order sharps, which down here is F, right? So F is our sharp, and then what you want to do is you want to find F sharp on the keyboard. You play that. You know, it's between F and G, and then you go up a half step, and that brings you to G right there. So let me show you a uh, keyboard. I need to bring that up. Just give me a second. Okay, so what I was saying is that, so say you have the one with one sharp. Well, remember that sharp is F sharp, the first in our order of sharps. Oops, and then all you gotta do is go up a half step, the very next note, and that gives you your key name. So let me show you some more examples of this to make sure we have it. So say we have the key of D. Well, the first question I have for you is, 
What two sharps do we have? Well, that's the first two in our order sharps, which is F and C. Here's the right one. So these two sharps, F and C, it's the first two in our order sharps down here, F and C. Just like that. So now how do we figure out the key name? I mean, it's written here for us, D, right? So that's where we want to be. Well, now we have two sharps to pick from. So which one do we choose? Well, you choose, you always choose the sharp all the way to the right, the very last one that you've added. Well, that's C sharp, right? Well, let's bring over wherever it went. Expand that all across, away across. So this time our last note was C sharp, right? Well, this time we're gonna go up a half step from that C sharp. And that gives us D, is that the right answer? Well, let's take a look. And yep, D is the correct answer. Let's do one more on the sharp side. And by the way, this rule is only for sharp. So remember that the rule in figuring out um, what actual the key name is, is you go to all the sharps that you have, you go to the very last sharp that you added. In this last case, it was C sharp. You go up a half step up from there, the last sharp, and it gives you the key name. So this time we're gonna do uh, the key of A. So before we know it's the key of A, say I didn't know that, and I was like, oh man, I have to figure out what the key name is. What you do is you look at the, th the sharps that we have. You say, okay, we have three sharps. What three sharps do we have? Well, you go down here. It's the first three in your order sharps, F, C, and G. And you go to that last sharp, and you're actually gonna go to G sharp. So let me show you wherever this went to. There we go. So you want to go to G sharp, the very last sharp we have, and you go up, how far do we go up? We go up a half step, right? That's as far as we gotta go. And so the one with three sharps is the key of A. And, and take a look, if I get rid of the pen, and there's A. Hello, Vithershin is back with us again today. Great to see you again. Okay, now for the flats. The flats work a little bit different, but they're not overly difficult. So the one thing I have to tell you about the flats is you're just going to have to memorize that F has one flat. So just memorize that right away. It's only one that you got to memorize. It's not that hard. So memorize that because that one doesn't fit the little thing I'm going to give you. So just know that F has one flat. The one with two flats, here's what you do. And how are we going to figure out that the answer is going to be B flat? Well, here's what you do. You say, okay, you have all the flats, right, that we have. We have two flats. What two flats do we have? Well, it's the first two in our order flats, B flat and E flat. As we can see here visually, there they are. And all you have to do is you go to the last flat and you go to the one right to the left of that. So it's really always going to be the next to last flat. I'll show you in a minute how that works out. But it's always the next to last one. So hey, take a look. That's a B flat and our answer is B flat. Here's the three flats we have for E flat. Well, how are we going to figure that out? That's E flat. So I go to the last flat right here, and I go to the one right next to that, and that's actually the one we want. And that happens to be an E flat right there, if I drew a note right where that, that flat is. What about the key of A flat? How am I going to know that four flats is the key of A flat? Well, you figure out what four flats you have, B, E, A, and D. Well, what was the next to last flat I uh, had? I had A flat, right? So that's your answer. So you'll probably want to watch this video uh, a bunch of times. I'm probably gonna break it up in a few parts uh, just to make sure you get it because there's a methodology to it. Remember that when, when you have a certain key signature and you're trying to figure out what notes, which notes in that key signature are sharp, all you gotta do is count however many sharps you have in the order of sharps or the order of flats if you're talking about flats. So if you have two sharps, you're just going to say, okay, my two sharps are F and C, the first two in our order of sharps. Same thing with flats. If I have two flats, the two flats I'm going to have are B and E flat. Now then remember one last wrap up is that if you have sharps, you go to the very last sharp. So if you have three sharps, F, C, and G, 
you go to G sharp and you go up a half step from that and that gives you A and with flats remember that's the next to last flat is will be your answer for um, the flat so in terms of how these will help your playing if you understand uh, what the key signatures are you'll understand what notes the song is centered around that'll really help you out uh, when, when you're reading a new piece of music it also helps tell you what notes are sharp or what notes are flat in a piece which are is very uh, important to know when you're playing it'll make things um, a lot easier for you so I was just wondering does anybody have any questions so far Okay, I'm going to continue here uh, in a second, although we are almost done with this topic. Alright everybody, this has been Tim from Lessons on the Web. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you learned something, and subscribe because more terrific lessons are of course on the way. And, if you subscribed and did all that stuff already, like the video, yada yada, head over to my website, LessonsOnTheWeb.com, where you can learn much, much more about playing the piano, music theory, and all kinds of good stuff. So this has been Tim from Lessons on the Web, and uh, have a great one, and I'll see you for the next video.